Community Cats podcast. Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Community Cats podcast. I am your host, Stacey LeBaron. I have been involved helping homeless cats for over 20 years with the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. The goal of this podcast is to expose you to amazing people who are improving the lives of cats. I hope these interviews will help you learn how you can turn your passion for cats into action. Today, we're speaking with Sarah Jane Farrell. Sarah Jane, I'd like to welcome you to the show. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to to be here with you. So, Sarah Jane, if you could share with us, tell us a little bit about all of the work that you do. Uh, your bio is so tremendous. I just would like you to to share with us what you do and how you help animals. Mm, I I think they help me more more than I help them, and um, I think I've always sort of felt like something was really missing from my life when I was young. I grew up in Zimbabwe on a farm in the bush and had a had a wonderful life really connecting with nature and I always preferred the company of animals to people so I, I've had a bit of a PhD of life experience so being kicked to the curb a few times and struggled a lot with my own anxiety and, and depression and just just not feeling like I've really ever fitted with people and was always told that it was too sensitive and too much and, and animals really got me I think that's the one thing that they're so good at is just being able to hold that present moment with us and to just realize that that it's okay to be different. And and I think this is where animals are just have been just such profound teachers in my own life is they've shown me where I have been stuck in in the lies that I I told myself or of the not enoughness and the not trusting and and they're just such great mirrors especially cats they're so sensitive to energy where we're lying to ourselves so they've been a huge part of my own healing and and my continued growth and practice as a practitioner of life to to really understand that life I think Joseph Campbell says that you know that we don't believe what does he say? We don't believe that people are looking so much for the meaning of life as much as they're looking for the experience of, of being alive. And I think that's in my work with trauma. Uh, this is really what I want to impart and, and empower people to do is to navigate life's difficulties and, and realize and recognize that unresolved trauma and grief and injury and depression, all of it is there to really connect us back to our true nature. And, and heal this great separation sickness where we have not as much regard as, as I would like to see. And I think that's what I'm so grateful for for you and, and what you're creating is that you're really assisting people in that dream of my dream of animals being treated with mindful regard that we really adopt a much wiser understanding and recognize the differences between fear and, and trust motivation and that it's a, a two-way dialogue and cats are really good at showing us that. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about, you know, working with individuals, you help individuals who have experienced certain traumas, uh, utilizing a relationship with animals in order to help with their healing. Is that sort of what your, what your focus is? Yeah, I think really resolving unresolved childhood experiences is a big part of it because I think as children, I mean, I remember getting my first cat at, at probably the age of five. We had my, I had three, three sisters, but we each were, became the stewards or the guardians of our own cat. And my first cat, Candy Kane, I'll never forget her, <laughs> five years old. She was such a beautiful instrument. And I want to say instrument because she helped me to work through my own depression and my own anxiety by calming us down. We know that catchy pressure, the, the acupuncture that cats give us, you know, she'd come and lie on my chest and, and need me and really bring me back to being in that present moment. So I, I really do show up today in a place of, of helping people and animals really navigate through all of that and just learn to to live brave, to live into that fire of the heart and trust themselves that they're enough. They're enough for themselves, they're enough for their animals, and, and that they're enough for life. So you mentioned the trust process. What is that? Ah, I think one of the most ancient wisdoms, it's, it's kind of my own version of, of my biggest core wounding in life, is how do I trust myself? 
when when we've been programmed so much through outward things to live from our head rather than our heart and to really return to this place of trusting that we are connected to everything that life is about really living in your truth and and staying true to feeling everything you know and 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 working with animals as we all do especially in in situations where people haven't been unkind the trust process is really the first step in our ability to trust that we're enough. So it's as ancient as humankind has ever been that we need eyes on us. And cats are, have always been a very, very big part of human beingness. You know, there were always cats around you see every witch in the Wiccan and mm-hmm. every healer that that there is always this energy of the unseen world that cats really hold for us so they they really speak deeply to how we create our own safety and how do we trust our own intuition and follow our truth and really feel again so that we can create this deeper loving connection for life and and what really moves us to this this deep fulfillment and abundance as a steward you know, that we're the guardians here, we're the visitors. And I think we've lost our way as, as a human, as a species to the connection that, that the, the Leo constellation or the, the stargate back to the great pyramids and the Egyptian times lions and cats, the cat energy of the Leo is about meeting ourselves where we are and learning to, to live from that brave heart which is, is Leah. So I'm going to try and bring us back to sort of a grounding. Some of the experiences that I have had with many folks that have feral cat colonies or caretakers Mm -hmm. and that are out there trapping the ferals to get them spayed and neutered. There is a lack of trust out there sometimes in the belief that they are able to do what's best for that colony, for that particular cat in that situation, for the people in that community. There's so much obligation and I would say almost pressure, and you can either turn it in a negative way or in a positive way. And many people have always felt that I'm very positive out there. Even if a solution is not visible, I feel that a path will show itself at some point in time when we need it most, and we will be able to find our way. But then there are others who are, are like, oh, well, you know, we can't do this and we can't do that. And there's a lot of different stressful energy out there when we're dealing with our community cats. Do you have any thoughts, advice, or guidance on on how we can respond to those situations? Oh, I, I have I have book loads full. I have tons of it. <laughs> And, and in fact, what I'll do is I'll give you the link to to one of the one of the most popular talks that I do with shelter and volunteers that are, are involved in rescue and rehabilitation, sterilization projects like that. To really, to really, it's it's really simple. Again, it's really look, looking at it that we have to let go of all our projections and our expectations of how we think things are going to to turn out. And, and to really, this is where the two, two-way dialogue of are you with me and being able to use the trust process, which is really about being the stronger energy field when a cat is absolutely petrified, especially when it's being trapped or it doesn't trust humans, to be able to hold the space, take the responsibility for that cat and say, you can be calm, you can be peaceful with us. Because they don't know don't in 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 their language, don't doesn't exist in animal communications. Nature's always looking for a way to thrive. And it's this dance, isn't it, between the knowing and the not knowing and, and between wanting to sort of control what our needs are that oftentimes comes up as this pretense to love. And I say this with love, but it always comes from this place of attachment that we want things to work out a certain way. And all they're looking for is how do I keep myself safe? How do I create safety for myself? So they don't often know that we're there to help them. And and this is where these layers and layers of, of our own expectations and projections about the, you know, the, the three biggest fears that we have as humans, which is death and incarceration and uh, and probably the lack of control. So I think that's such a good starting point to look that at pain as our greatest teacher, that oftentimes those animals are mirroring back to us our deepest fears. 
of how we think life should look and to really go back into trusting not just our own intuition to follow our truth that we're wanting to help, not from a place of superiority, but from a place of, of that conversation of, can we do this? And then honoring the animal's point of view in it. And so another another thing, too, is to think about who who am I in this picture? Because we have been told this is your prescription of what you need to do for cats in your community. That doesn't mean that that's what you are individually comfortable with. So you need to, or we as a group, as individuals and then as a group, need to come to a balance between the two because I individually out there may not feel as comfortable doing certain things as maybe another organization might recommend we do things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, and again, it comes back to exactly what you said is, is keeping our own emotions in check and coming from a place of total non-attachment, that there is a job to be done and that this is, this is what needs to happen and not be attached to the outcome. So often when we're trapping or we're in a situation where these animals' lives are in danger because it's a shopping center and there's cars and there's business, is really returning to the place of trusting that their instinctual nat nature is always going to keep them safe and not sort of projecting our own version of the fantasy that it should be any, any different. So I think for me, being ready, really being ready and willing to go into a two-way dialogue is, is so different in how we approach assisting these cats, especially the, in the feral colonies and, and in places where they actually don't know how to trust humans. Hey, everyone. We have another great webinar with Hannah Shaw, the kitten lady, coming on October 21st at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Attending this webinar, you will learn everything you need to know about saving kittens' lives. She'll be talking all about kittens and bottle babies. This event will cover the ins and outs of kittens, including an overview of issues impacting cats and kittens, how to set up your home, manage your time, and make fostering fun. We'll also cover how to properly feed, clean, and provide basic medical care to a kitten, as well as how to get involved in your local community. To sign up for this free webinar, go to www.communitycatspodcast.com. I hope to see you there. It's on October 21st at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Join us and have fun. <coughs> the Community Cats podcast will soon be a year old with over 200 episodes profiling amazing people who are all making a difference in the lives of community cats. If you would like to support the show but not be a sponsor, feel free to contribute to our efforts by going to www.communitycatspodcast.com and follow the donate link. Help us to continue to provide excellent programming. Sarah Jane, let's uh, change the conversation just a little bit uh, to one of your, your big, big passions, which leads into bigger cats <laughs> and the work that, that you've been doing with large cats like lions. Tell me about the work you're doing with them and how it's impacted you specifically. Oh my gosh. Uh, so much. Uh, again, it all comes back to this whole thing around trust and the lions. I mean, there are very few lions or big cats, the cheetahs in Africa that are, that are actually really free anymore. They're all in sanctuaries or they're in large reserves like the Kruger National Park. And poaching is endemic in this country because of Chinese medicine and the old folkloric things of that the lion bones give you virility or the tiger bones are all about virility and really educating people to, to again, really know that they – create their own place of empowerment. So lions, lions and, and the big cats that I work with, I'm involved with at an incredible organization called Emoya. And they, this started on a dream of one, one woman, a young woman, she was 16. And she, her dream was to, to give animals in circuses and in, in horrendous conditions that were kept as pets and that, a return back to African soil to, to live out their lives as big cats should. So there's a lot of trauma with this and, and, and a huge, huge organization that was worldwide to get all these rescue cats out of, out of these conditions, out of zoos, out of, 
out of these canned lion situations and bring them back to just being big cats. So they've taught me a lot about teamwork that the, the, the younger lions really teach us how to depend on the whole. So it's really about bringing us as, as a species, as human beings, back to this kindness of the tribe, of what it means to have eyes on us, to have someone else have your back. And you see this play out in nature beautifully where the younger lions that have the speed and, and the force to, to go in and catch the big, the prey so that everybody eats tonight. They may have the speed, but they're relying on the, the old wisdom of the older lions that don't have the speed, but they have the, the wisdom and the experience to help bring down dinner for, for the night. So they teach us so much about how, how to, to live in cooperation and the trust, you know, the whole thing is around trusting again, that you don't have to figure it out all on your own that you don't have to try and fix everything on your own, that it takes a community to bring us back into some kind of natural order and balance because we all need that predictability of the tribe or the prey or the herd to dance between this this aspect of predator and prey that's within ourselves. And I think that's where you were speaking of earlier is that I often see this too when I'm working with shelters or volunteers that are assisting in sterilization programs or rehabilitating or finding forever homes for for cats and dogs and, and horses that we do bring our own hurts and our own places of abandonment into that and, and how nature just really shows us how to be, be with it, to just be with whatever arises and, and know that the success of the whole is because of the individual and that's the success of the individual because of the team. And lions are really good at that. The big cats are so good at that because they know their strengths and, and they're not doing this whole comparing game that humans do. <laughs> so, so they're great teachers in that to just look at how do we adapt to our environment and, and how do we create better? How do we create harmony amongst species rather than having this sort of domination or projection that we have control over, over cats in, in this, in this situation. So you provide consulting, counseling services, you do speaking engagements, and you have even worked with consulting with like behavioral issues for, for cats in homes and, and that kind of thing. You want to fill us in and sort of the, the programs that you have offered? Absolutely. I would love to. So I have a, I have an online animal communication course that, that really goes into all of this in great depth on, on how to trust yourself to really to listen to the intuition and to be able to gestalt track. So this is the foundation of what the trust process is about is getting your mind to a place of non-thinking because our animals, especially our cats and dogs, they're not used to us being without our thoughts and we're too busy. We're too full of thoughts all the time. So I'm, I want as many people out there to get this, that when we create calm and presence in the moment by moment activity of non thinking, we get to give that to our animals because they, they start to realize that you're the one that's giving them the space to just be quiet and to relax and be calm. And that's when this deep healing takes place. So they really go into this, this state of deep, deep healing where they can just allow their bodies to actually somatically release a lot of the trauma. So the animal communications is sort of the entry point to build on once we have the trust process in, in place. And everybody can do this. Kids are really good at this because they know how to live in the present moment. So they're great teachers too, to, to just show us how to explore this animal intelligence through trusted co operation. And I think that, you know, I, I really, that's my desire is to get as many people to start to use the trust process in combination with animal communications and these healing abilities that you, we all have to allow that animal to do their own healing. Cause we don't really do it. We, we think as practitioners that we're, we're creating the healing. We're just creating the space 
to help the animals and, and, and I certainly want that for, for the animals and people that come to me is to find that deep sense of trust and confidence while they're opening to new possibilities of how, you know, what does my body want? Having the conversation with the body, the inner horse or the, the inner cat. And, and this is where the animal totems and the shamanic work comes in to being able to bring in your guides or your spirit animals or your animal that's passed, you can still have conversations with them. So that's really the basis of my work. And and underneath it is, of course, all the, the more the fancy big words of neuroplasticity and nervous system repair, because we have a nervous system and we have a body and it's the body that we often forget we need to go at our body's pace. Not the not the not the pace of our minds. It's the body that's here to have the experience, just as our animals choose to have that experience. And I think this is a big one for a lot of people. Is oftentimes they, they people say, "Oh, you know, I feel so sorry for the the homeless, you know, the dog on the street, or the the cats that are sort of fending for themselves because they've been lost their homes and they've gone back into being feral." and it, it was a big concept for me too in the beginning to actually realize and honor with great a great amount of reverence that that cat or or dog or horse or human being has chosen to incarnate into this body to have that that experience of not having uh, a human companion that they want to have that experience and and how different it how different the outcome can be when you're having that conversation with with the feral cats or or the cats that don't have humans in their lives to get them to cooperate with you to get them to sterilize when we give them the choice to choose and we show them the impact of of getting them sterilized or or getting their wounds taken care of they are much more willing through that inspiration of two way dialogue to come in with willingly you know, it doesn't take so long. I find a lot of the time that when we set a trap, it doesn't take year, you know, days or weeks sometimes because we've set up this communication through trust and through the two-way dialogue that the, that the animal goes, wow, and, and you see their, their pupils get all big and they really get it. And they, they will walk in without the trauma that sometimes is involved when we're trying to do this from a very busy mind. That's, that's kind of in a nutshell what I do. <laughs> Sarah Jane, if folks are interested in reaching out to you directly, um, how would they find you? They can go to accessyourtruenature.com or they can find me on Facebook under my name, Sarah Jane Farrell, or Access Your True Nature. And I'm putting out a lot of content. I have, like I said, a lot of beautiful training videos on healing the abandoned child because I think when we choose to heal ourselves we get to to help others to heal and that includes you know across species so I would invite people to just go and explore my YouTube channel explore um, some of the the audios of trainings that we've done like the one we did with the shelter volunteers to really get a different point of view about this this collaboration between species yeah, we'll, and we'll most definitely get that link into our show notes. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners today? Uh, I, I would just just say keep keep being who you are, and and just know that as soon as you trust yourself, you're going to know how to to live and contribute to the greater good of of a sustainable planet where where we come back to our hearts and we have this kindness and compassion first to ourselves so that we can, we can pass that on to future generations beyond, beyond the human species. So I just want to, to just say, you know, know who you are and, and love who you are and not what loves you because this is where we really can start opening up to having a bigger impact in our effect on how we're living in cooperation. You know, that's what I dream of is, is a world where we, we have that compassion and that understanding for, for other species and their choices. So just to choose and have the power of choice. Oh, that's great. I, I have this vision of for, with the focus on community cats, but obviously it's the, the community at all different levels, just having a really humane community where, you know, everybody is considerate for, for all, for everyone, everyone there, you know, and I think it's just, we're getting there. 
we're getting there. We are slowly, slowly but surely. But we are getting there. And I want to uh, wish you uh, a great visit with the big cats. I believe you're you're going to be heading out shortly for a, a trip there. And uh, I don't. I live in Vermont, and so I, I'm not around the big cats that often. And they do fascinate me. I love cheetahs. So uh, please pass along some positive energy for me. And I want to thank you so much, Sarah Jane, for being a guest on the show. And I hope we'll have you on in the future. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you for everything that you're doing to create a, a, a world that's better than we found it. So thank you, Stacy. Thank you for listening to the Community Cats podcast. I would really appreciate it if you would go to iTunes, leave a review of the show. It will help spread the word to help more community cats. 